Okay, good morning uh, our friends from the media. We are taking you live from Bangkok. Today we have uh, J.V. Arsena of uh, Global Media Affairs to introduce our guest for today. Good morning. Thank you, Yusek Karaki. Okay, good morning to everyone, to our friends from the international media. I would like to welcome you and thanks to all of you for joining us in today's uh, briefing. Now I am pleased to to uh, uh, I'm very pleased to to be joined. Uh, we are very pleased to be joined by the Trade and Ind Industry Secretary Ramon Lopez, who will talk about the participation of the President uh, to the ASEAN Summit. Okay, before we move to the Q and A qu uh, portion, uh, I have to to to. So let's begin the, the briefing with the opening statement of the Secretary before we turn it to your Q&A. Okay. Thank you and uh, good morning everyone. Um, we're pleased to be here. Uh, we're joining the delegation of the President, President uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Uh, in his participation in this 34th ASEAN Summit. You know, every year there are basically two leader summit or what we call ASEAN summit wherein all leaders, heads of state uh, are attending the, the ASEAN uh, and as you know for this year uh, Thailand is the chair last year it was Singapore uh, and each year there, will, there are two summits the first summit is about this month April, May, June and they normally would tackle uh, uh, relevant global issues, uh, international, uh, more of international agenda, relationship with uh, other uh, regional groupings or countries outside ASEAN. Um, and, uh, and towards November is what we call the another ASEAN summit, which would include uh, ASEAN leaders plus their dialogue partners, the leaders of the dialogue partners. And that's uh, the reason why every November you would see other heads of state outside the 10 ASEAN member countries. Uh, so we have the U.S., uh, Russia uh, joining, uh, and, and, and China joining also the, uh, the meetings of uh, ASEAN uh, on about November. No? So, so for this uh, first meeting of the year, the summit, they, usually they call it the ASEAN Retreat uh, Summit, so they tackle different issues uh, of, of uh, importance to, you know, to the you know, global development. So for this uh, year, the uh, 34th ASEAN Summit will be basically uh, discussing trends in the fourth industrial revolution, the uh, external relations of, of ASEAN. There will be discussions with the counterpart ASEAN Business Advisory Council. I understand the, the Leader Summit will also be having an interface with the youth sector uh, and also the parliamentarians. Uh, for the fourth IR, uh, uh, of course, the president would have uh, interventions as it is also an important uh, development uh, taking place uh, worldwide and Basically, they will be uh, discussing about how ASEAN can prepare, can cooperate, and, and prepare the ASEAN companies, ASEAN countries, uh, harmonize, uh, sta har harmonize uh, e-commerce uh, rules, regulation, facilitate trade, uh, handle consumer-related uh, uh, complaints, uh, consumer-related issues, as it pertains to e-commerce. So they'll be tackling those uh, issues as well as uh, preparation, capacity building, co cooperation in capacity building, um, uh, helping especially those countries that would need uh, assistance in uh, uh, scaling up and uh, upskilling their, uh, their, their people uh, towards uh, the fourth IR uh, skills that would be required. No? Um, and then for external uh, relations of ASEAN, uh, ASEAN basically would uh, tackle also what would be the criteria if they are to uh, start uh, their talks with uh, other possible partner countries. 
no um so i'll stop there and basically that's the the background of our participation in uh, this year's summit okay now we will move to your to the question and answer uh, portion please state your name and your agency victoria tulad hi hello Oh, so uh, RCEP may be tackled. It's not in the agenda, but uh, since it is a major uh, an FTA uh, that includes ASEAN and six other partner countries, FTA partners, uh, it may be tackled in the sense that uh, discussing the ta the, uh, the status and uh, having a, a mandate to conclude it uh, soon, and that. That soon means this year. So among the ASEAN ministers, that's the reason we, we are a day uh, ahead of the schedule. Starting the, this afternoon, we shall have an ASEAN economic ministers meeting, essentially just to discuss the RCEP. Uh, so, and then uh, really uh, ensuring that we are able to uh, complete the, the major issues, address the major issues towards uh, September towards August September so that uh, we could hopefully announce a conclusion towards November so that's the timetable we are looking at oh, RCEP basically gains in terms of greater market access for products of interest to us uh, normally we include their agriculture services uh, we are we would be able to uh, send uh, people if they want to work, you know, in the RCEP uh, participating countries, uh, as well as you know, important products. What RCEP does is uh, it basically levels up the market access uh, in terms of like if you talk of uh, how many products will be included uh, in the in the agreement, which will have a program to liberalize, in other words, to lower the tariff rates over time. Uh, if you look at ASEAN plus one, in other words, ASEAN, we have an ASEAN FTA, let's say, with Japan, ASEAN with China, separately, no? ASEAN with Korea, ASEAN with India. We are in different levels of, like, trade liberalization there, no? So, in terms of market access, let's, let's say with India, I think we are in the 70%, 75% inclusion of products to be liberalized, but with respect to other countries, Japan, China, and, and, and all that, it would be over 80% uh, inclusion. For RCEP, there is a higher benchmark, which is about 90 to 92% inclusion. In other words, more products hopefully will be included that will allow greater market access to these countries participating in RCEP. So, that's one product. As you can imagine that's also true for services, including more sectors in services. Can we send more engineers, accountants, uh, and all, all different kinds of services, uh, architects no? in other countries, uh, RCEP countries? Good morning, Secretary Vivian Gulia from ABS-CBN. I understand that um, originally the target for the conclusion of negotiations for the RCEP was in 2015, and then the deadline was moved a couple of years later. And then now there's another um, target that you're working on on November. Uh, what's dragging the conclusion of the negotiations? I'm sorry, I will be using a single microphone. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's really a, a long, a comprehensive uh, FTA agreement. Imagine involving also 16 countries. So when it comes to the details in negotiation, like product inclusion, uh, services, what services, how many um, rules, rules of origins, example, uh, 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 and, and, and other rules on government procurement, competition, e-commerce, SME, and all that. So many uh, uh, discussions are taking place, and sometimes uh, with so many countries demanding maybe higher level of ambition, as we say, in terms of liberalization, uh, there are different uh, 
uh, sets of targets or ambition as to the level of liberalization. So some are more prepared to give more, some are less prepared to give more. So that is where the problem is. In the end, it's really in the recognizing the different levels of development, preparedness. Uh, much as we want to liber liberalize everything, not all countries would be in the same stage. So it's a continuing process of negotiation. Um, so that's the reality we are facing. So we have reached a point, uh, like in our last uh, ASEAN ministers meeting, uh, to really uh, demand from the different negotiating parties, negotiating countries, to be more realistic and pragmatic and recognize the different limitations of the, this different, of the participating countries. Uh, sometimes we are, like for instance in our case, we presented our best case and we cannot give more like sectors or industries because they are already uh, limited or restricted by constitution and we cannot change our constitution overnight. No? So in, in other words, we're telling them this is, this is it. Don't ask for more. So mga ganyang discussion. So yun yung, those are the, you know, there are those many cases of, of similar nature that, that some would demand more but others cannot give more. So it, and, and imagine there are 18 chapters. Uh, I think by now we have about seven chapters concluded. So, but, but bulk of the remaining would be the trade in goods. There's a one chapter, trade in services, another chapter. Uh, that, uh, uh, that is the subject of this neg continuing negotiations. Um, anyway, we mapped out the different countries there are different levels of acceptance already of the 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 the, uh, the other partner countries, no. So we mapped out, and basically we're reaching many green lights. There are just a couple of mga what we call orange lights. In other words, not yet settled, that will have to be uh, settled, because it's sometimes country to country discussion also. How important is it to conclude the negotiations for the RCEP this year, um, given the uh, trade war between the U.S. and China? And what are we expecting from the uh, talks um, among ASEAN leaders, I mean, um, trade leaders, with regard to the dispute, uh, I mean, with regard to U.S.-China uh, trade war? Thank you. Uh, it is precisely the 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 reality right now that's happening uh, because of this trade tension between U.S. and China that compel the ASEAN countries as well as the RCEP participating uh, uh, countries to really fast track the RCEP so that at least in this part of the world in the we will have this regional uh, trade ag uh, free trade agreement uh, that can uh, still improve the the trading within the region and somehow be uh, partially insulated from the impact of what's going on between U.S. and China. But as you know, China is also a participant in the RCEP. No? So it will only strengthen also the case for in, the, in favor of China as it participates in this regional grouping, no? yung regional FTA natin sa RCEP. Hi, sir. My name is Dean Hern Chen. I'm with AFP. Um, could you talk about some of the countries that are being less liberal about RCEP that you mentioned? Uh, we hear that India and China, they're sort of trying to work out their bilateral agreements through RCEP. Could you talk about that? Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, it might not be proper to talk in detail about you know those those uh, real issues, but since you have that information, uh, there's uh, a bit of truth in that because uh, really big economies, India, China, with over a billion population each, would normally have uh, I mean uh, some some differences no and expectations. So, but it's not only between the two countries. Sometimes it's. Uh, the w one of them with other countries also. Uh, we have to realize, I said that uh, 
that uh, right now ASEAN has FTA as mentioned as FTA with all these each of the six countries but those six countries many of them would not have FTA with each other that's why it's taking a little more more time for those six countries among themselves to talk because they're starting from zero no so unlike in ASEAN with these countries we are simply elevating the level of liberalization so then that's the the reality it's among themselves eh, that are usually taking time thank you sir um my other question is on this uh indo-pacific outlook strategy uh that thailand has said that they want to conclude during the talks this year or this month and i'm wondering how uh, you think that would affect how um, the ASEAN member countries navigate between the U.S.-China rivalry happening now? Thank you, sir. You know, while you know, while there's really a an impact on the global trade, as you know, global trade is uh, slowing down already. I mean, we've seen the numbers like on the first quarter, and even for countries like Philippines, which has it's not directly affected, but somehow indirectly affected. As we see, let's say, the 11 trading economies in this region, 9 out of 11 suffered decline in their exports. That would show really the impact of the slowdown caused by the U.S.-China trade tension. So, so um, we, we simply want to, you know, that, that issue to hopefully tempered down and be resolved uh both US and China coming up to a to the you know to a better agreement between the two so that they can put a stop to the worsening of of uh the the trade the uh, trade tensions and uh, but importantly at the same time ASEAN should be prepared and have a better uh a trading performance among themselves i mean among the member countries uh, and 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 also for other countries not part of the U.S.-China trade war. In other words, ASEAN with Japan, ASEAN with South Korea should improve. Then uh, each of us, as you know, we have bilateral discussions. Like Philippines has just started uh, FTA negotiation with South Korea. Um, we are reviewing the current uh, Philippine-Japan economic partnership agreement, PJPA. Um, and, and, and because we have particular interest, for example, our industrial prod agriculture and industrial products uh, in agriculture partic of particular interest would be bananas because we are the world's biggest banana supplier, producer and supplier. So we, we would like to uh, gain better market access to these two countries which are uh, like Japan, which is a, a trading partner already, an FTA partner. And, and Korea, hopefully, a better, uh, a, a new FTA to be developed with them. So each of us are uh, would be working on our respective, uh, I guess, offensive interests as well and continue pursuing you, uh, the uh, your bilateral negotiations aside from this multilateral ASEAN and RCEP discussions. Morning, sir. Morning. Sir, may we know the Philippine government's position on foreign trash imports? Uh, will the Philippines support the proposal to ban these imports, especially plastic and e-waste, during the summit? What What's the government's position on foreign trash imports, and will you support the proposed trash uh, waste uh, waste imports? And will the government support the proposed ban for ASEAN to ban these imports, these waste imports? to prevent countries in the region from becoming uh, dumping sites of developed countries? Yeah, uh, you know, it's not under my, my sector, but I've also just uh, learned that uh, I think a few weeks ago we have made that announcement. I think government has made that, that uh, announcement that uh, we would uh, ban the importation of waste trash into the country so 
that's a, a unilaterally set policy. So if there will be such a move in ASEAN, obviously it is something we will support. about imposing heavier penalties for these importers because they're using the the system to uh, misdeclare or misdeclare their imports just like what happened with um, uh, Last time, Canada uh, of course we are for it no I mean, I mean uh, stiffer penalties uh, plus the issue of misdeclaration uh, is not only true to this issue no if in fact it's an issue ongoing uh, even with other products and that affects basically uh, lo our local manufacturers so uh, but that's really uh, you know another matter that has to be addressed by the BOC to prevent more of these de misdeclarations and uh, I understand there are technologies being set in place uh, I think they're buying machines scanners and and all, all new new technology equipment that can minimize those occurrences. Philippine Star. Sir Christina Mendes, Philippine Star. Sir, what are, what are our expectations on the President's meeting with the business leaders here? Later or tomorrow? tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Um, so th there are no deals to be signed beca uh, because, uh, well, the first of all, the President uh, is set uh, scheduled to meet a group of uh, Thai businessmen, uh, members, and uh, basically leaders of the Federation of uh, Thai Industries, uh, the Business Chamber in, in, in Thailand, uh, as well as uh, private companies uh, who are in banks, um, uh, f food manufacturing, agriculture, you know, agribusiness, real estate. Uh, so it will be a an, an open discussion that will basically allow the president to present Philippines as a you know a a very good investment destination. Some of these private companies actually are already uh, operating in the Philippines, uh, so we are basically asking them you know to be more active and increase their exposure, their investments. Uh, uh, definitely, the president will assure them. The, all these uh, guarantees and protection of their investments, as well as uh, 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 present to them, you know, the, a good business case for the Philippines, in terms of the improvement in credit rating, the very many, uh, the several reforms we are undertaking on trade, uh, investment, tax, uh, financial reforms, as well as uh, liberalization of foreign investment. Uh, in terms of foreign equity restriction, we would like to liberalize many of those so that we can attract more investments into the country uh, and, and, and present a business really as one of the vibrant economies in the region. In fact, we're the second fastest growing in the ASEAN region. So we'd like to re-emphasize that. Secretary. Secretary, good morning. Yung pagkaantala o pagkabagal ng implementasyon ng Code of Conduct sa West Philippine Sea, gaano kalaki ang epekto nito sa trade relation ng Pilipinas sa mga ASEAN countries at ano ang mga produktong apektado nito? Hindi ko masasabi ngayon kung ano yung epekto nito. Offhand, uh, nakikita po namin there's free flow of goods. Wala namang nagiging restriction sa mga commercial vessels, sa transaction, uh, pagpasok at paglabas ng mga goods. I mean, within, I mean from Philippines to China, vice versa. Uh, the, our, our trade with China has, in, in fact, increased. They're the number one trading partner right now. Uh, and also, even with our operation, our, our trading with other countries, so hindi naman po siya sa akin, ha, hindi ko po nakikitang yung efekto. Tuloy-tuloy yung ating trading po kasi. 
Uh, I think baka separate issue yung issue na pinag-uusapan sa Code of Conduct uh, at may mas uh, iba pang issue na connected doon. Pero sa, in terms of sa ating economy, sa ating trade, wala naman po tayong nakikitang connection. Oo, tuloy lang po yan. In fact, mas lumalakas po tum- ang ating export to China. Nag- lumalaki ng ng mabilis ibig sabihin na uh, fast grow tayo diyan ano uh, uh, sabi ko nga no number uh, in the in the past i think 10 years ago mga number 3 number 4 ang China in terms of the largest trading partner ngayon number 1 na kasi we export uh, a lot malakas ang export growth malakas din yung import growth kasi marami ring produkto uh, better supplied by China in other words, nakakakuha tayo ng mga murang produkto rin sa China. Kaya with the Philippine economy growing so fast, talagang uh, either they source it locally, pag hindi na kaya locally, o nag import tayo. Kaya po tumaas din ang importation natin. So tuloy naman po yan. Oh, okay. Ako okay. mahirap. That's difficult. <laughs> now what we're saying is that uh, basically, what we're saying is that uh, those issues on that that would involve the code of conduct concerning the West Philippine Sea uh, would not have any impact on on the commercial activities in terms of exportation, importation uh, to and from Philippines uh, to China and even with other trading partners. So there's no impact because that's more of political security, geopolitic uh, issue not really economic in nature. Uh, good morning, sir. Laila po from Inquirer. Sir, aside from um, fast-tracking the RCEP, how else is the ASEAN planning to handle the effects of the U.S.-China trade war on the regional, on the region? Uh, as everything is uh, already embedded in RCEP, eh? so it's hard to say, you know, outside RCEP, what else can we do? Uh, and I guess outside RCEP, since RCEP is an FTA, maybe non-FTA discussions in terms of, I guess, more cooperation, capacity building, wherever we can in terms of uh, uh, product development, branding, promotion, and all that, that that can increase competitiveness of countries in the region, especially the what we call the, the developing nations or the least developed nation members uh, of ASEAN. Um, this is what our president has always been uh, espousing when it comes to globalization. The globalization we should have is one that should be inclusive, and, and inclusive means making sure that the smaller countries get to benefit in any globalization development. So that would mean bigger countries opening up their mar- first training, helping, capacity building uh, in, in the developing nation, helping them improve their competitiveness, but, and then at the same time opening up their market for greater access to their market coming from the developing nation. So, so that will have to be observed no? uh, following the president's suggestion that for our globalization to be inclusive we really have to exert extra effort no? in, in helping the, the smaller guys. Hi, good afternoon Sir Jonah from Asahi Shimbun. Um, just a question about RCEP again. Um, what safety nets have we put up to make sure that our industries are protected you know, th- now that we are opening up the economy even more. Number two, um, you mentioned earlier that seven out of 18 chapters in RCEP have been concluded. So what are the remaining chapters that we need to go through and approve? And third question, po, it's a little off topic. Former Foreign Secretary Alberto Rosario was detained in Hong Kong. So he's the second um, prominent uh, for, t- for questioning immigration. Yeah, so w- what do we think about incidents like that? seems that 
members of the previous administration that have been very vocal against China are encountering troubles in Hong Kong. So, just that. Sorry, I, I, sorry, I can't answer the the last question. Uh, it's out. I mean, it's not. It's not us. Eh? It's China implementing their their rules. Eh? And they do business in Hong Kong. Uh, let them handle that. No, they're part of Hong Kong, a company, and I'm sure they can handle it themselves as well. Um, and I cannot speak for China. They're the ones who, uh, if at all, made that uh, action. The, uh, I, uh, it's not. It's not me to comment on that. No, I cannot. I cannot comment on that. Sorry. So the other question is how Philippine companies can prepare. Uh, obviously, whenever we do the negotiation, we make sure that only the companies, industries that are more prepared are the ones included in in this uh, talks about you know liberalization and globalization. But just to let you know also that actually Philippines has, and, and so with other ASEAN countries, have liberalize more than 90 percent already of all, all our products we're just basically you and usually sensitive on agriculture products especially when it comes to philippines so normally every time and every every time we do negotiations we are extra careful when it comes to you know to to agriculture products and but as you as yeah agriculture chapters yeah and then, um, but as you know also, uh, unilaterally, the Philippines liberalized the rice sector, no? uh, with, with the recent li rice liberalization program. And that is essentially to ensure that we have uh, adequate and uh, abundant supply of, uh, uh, of lower price, of more affordable uh, price uh, of rice in the market uh, because of what we experienced last year. No? So, and at the same time, provide a safety net and uh, a huge support uh, uh, for the agriculture, for the rice uh, farmers as well, no? so, so that it becomes a, some kind of a win-win uh, move on the part of the Philippine government. Sir, um, sorry to keep hammering on. Um, is there any sense from the Fili Philippines that the U.S. might have abandoned ASEAN with the dropping of the TPP and also now no one no abandoned ASEAN? With the, and do you have any comment on U.S. sort of appearing to pivot away from this region in recent months or years? Thank you. You th uh, thanks for that. You know, uh, frankly, uh, well, often my comment there is that we don't see or notice U.S. having that kind of stance right now. Uh, th uh, that they're about to abandon ASEAN. I think on the reverse, they've been active in in the talks, in the discussions with ASEAN. Uh, in fact, they may be more interested in in uh, partnering with ASEAN as. They very well know that ASEAN is partnering with China through RCEP. Uh, so we don't see really U.S. veering away and pivoting away from uh, from ASEAN. I think the reverse is more true. Uh, is that's the only question, no? Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, sir. Alan Nawal from PNA. Uh, well, fisheries is strictly not part of the agriculture uh, industry, but uh, it is uh, among the major contributors to the Philippine economy. Now, uh, with this uh, problem on the West uh, Philippine Sea, uh, uh, there, there are those who are saying that uh, uh, fisheries could be dragging down the economy because uh, our Filipino fishermen, fishermen uh, couldn't just uh, go out to the West uh, Philippine Sea and uh, uh, cuts their, you know, uh, thing. Uh, on the part of the Philippine government, uh, in the long term, uh, how do you see this uh, uh, thing going on? 
and uh, uh, affecting the economy of the country. Well, uh, Ashura, I still believe that uh, our fishermen can go anywhere, you know, where they are allowed to go. Uh, and they, they've been doing that. So I d we don't see that as a factor uh, that's affected by all this. Um, um, and, and then that fisheries will continue to be out to play an important role. But based on, if I remember correctly, some num recent numbers, they've not been growing that fast, I mean, as before. Uh, it may be a weather factor. I don't know really the reason uh, behind those uh, numbers, but uh, the agriculture uh, remains to be challenged uh, because of the you know weather disturbances uh, and other, I guess, uh, uh, challenges in the sector when it comes to other support that is necessary. So it's to me, I think we view that as a work in progress. We know that with the bigger budget now of Agri, they will be able to support more their sectors, their constituents. We've just discussed the rice. They're supported the rice farmers. They're building more irrigation with the help of the concerned agencies, NIA. Um, uh, they are distributing more more seeds, high-yielding high variety seeds, etc. So and fertilizer. So they have programs for those. So hopefully we just we just uh, hope a, a you know a recovery in the in the agri sector and fisheries included. Uh -oh. okay. Last question, uh, Jimmy Seven. Yeah. Uh, sir, the question I'm sorry is not within your cluster, but would you know if the recto back recto bank incident will be brought up in the meetings? Will President Duterte bring it up? And uh, has there been any update uh, with the cabinet on our diplomatic protest? So, uh, sorry, sorry, as you said, it's not under my sector. No idea on that one. Uh, after that last meeting, last was it last week or Monday? Monday this week, Bayon, I forgot na. But uh, uh, after that, wala namang ano na. Uh, but what I know is that there is that. Uh, uh, of course, the move or request to have an investigation so that we can really clarify uh, many things, many questions that we all are asking. No. Uh, 